Welcome everybody to the uh, to the Wichita Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, commonly referred to as WAMPO, for our April 10th meeting. Um, we are going to call it to order and uh, welcome everybody. We have a few new members um, that are here. I missed the last meeting, but I <clears throat> before we start, I'd like to again. Uh, recognize that we lost two members, not by election, but they passed on in life. And it was our mayor, Claire Donnelly, at, uh, at Mays, and then uh, Carl Coster shortly after that. And those two, as you, as those of you know, I mean, just fantastic individuals, true gentlemen. And my personal thoughts is, you know, the, they serve their community with integrity and respect. We all feel bad for their families and friends and their communities, but I, I really am glad. I want to thank their families, their spouses and friends for, for sharing these two individuals with bodies like us and, and in their communities. So um, I don't know if anybody else has any comments about either one of them. Uh, they were great, great people. So with that, uh, maybe about a five second moment of silence uh, in their honor. Thank you. Okay, with that, uh, recognize our new members, Donna Klassen. Maybe you were here last meeting or not. No. You want to say anything to? <laughs> <laughs> and Linda Ball is not here. So, but she's uh, replacing Carl. So, and they have a, so anyway, so Donna, you're, you're going to enjoy learning a lot of new acronyms and you'll be really. That's what I understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so move on to regular business. Um, it, approval, um, like to, if we all saw the agenda for today, um, entertain an, an approval for the uh, today's agenda. So moved. Thank you. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. I'm all opposed. Motion carries. Next item is the minutes from the March 13th meeting. Uh, you all received a copy of them in advance. If you had a chance to look at them, if there are any uh, comments or changes to the minutes. And being none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the March 13th minutes. Thank you, Jim. Second. Second, thanks, Ann. As Jim and Ann, okay. Uh, any other comments? Being none, all in favor of approval of the minutes signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to the director's report. Just in the uh, interest of time, we uh, provided you with year in reports on our scenario planning efforts, uh, our freight plan update uh, committee, and also a, uh, an update on the uh, planning walkable places uh, projects that are now ongoing or in the process of, of getting underway. Also wanted to bring you up to uh, speed a little bit on, we had conducted an asset management workshop last Wednesday. Had a turnout of about 10 communities. Uh, Aaron Henning from the city of Wichita gave a presentation on uh, their pavement assessment program, and David Swartz from KDOT gave an, an update on what KDOT is doing in terms of asset management. And it's basically kind of a start to finish project or process of project development, uh, operations, maintenance, capital expenditures, those kinds of things that uh, David was so impressed with Kelly's presentation that he thought maybe the state would kind of relook at what they were doing. So he. Uh, they thought they uh, he did a very good job, and our whole intent was not to tell people what they need to do. It was basically give them an idea of, of what might be available in terms of uh, how they could stretch limited resources and, and uh, maintenance dollars in, in how uh, in doing future projects and, and developing street maintenance uh, operations and, and capital, not capital budgets, but uh, maintenance type operations. But so it was a good seminar, and I think uh, people walked away with a lot of information and 
if anybody's interested, we do have uh, the City of Wichita's <coughs> slide presentation that we can share with, uh, with anybody that might uh, would like to see that as well. So. Yeah, I would add that was uh, nicely attended. I, I watched it, and or was there, and uh, the community was pretty interested in, uh, you know, the, the the quality of work that goes into cement and asphalt and everything else. Um, <clears throat> the state did reveal that under the federal, every state rate, rates their roads, and you know, Kansas has this nice rating of our roads overall, and they. come out and said if if one is bad you're going to get underrated or downrated instead of in Kansas case they said if two out of three are bad then we downrate so there's going to be a federal where Kansas was in the 90 percentile of of good roads it's likely they say we'll now be in the 70s but other states are going to go down too so it'll be it was kind of interesting conversation that test that he had so that was one observation and then the other again is that, is that for the policy body and for your communities if you need uh, that presentation I believe the uh, public works division of Wichita is willing to come out and, and uh, share how they do it so uh, that was good so thank you sir. <clears throat> I'd like to make one comment and I don't know if Phil I don't know if Phil wants to bring it up or not, but there's a survey out there online right now to take on infill. Uh, you don't, isn't that Wampos? I thought it was. Okay, it was under the Wampos site, so that's why I thought it was. Okay. That's right. You want to comment about it? Well, it just talked about neighborhoods and what type of buildings and stuff you thought ought to go in and backfill or infill oh, okay. in a, a core area. So if anybody's interested in that, I, I found it on the WAMPO site, and it's an interesting uh, survey. All right. Anything else, Director? Report? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, moving on to consent agenda. Um, planning walkable places. Tricia? Is Must there going to be a consent agenda? Okay, we're just going, yeah, that's right. We're going to approve the consent agenda. Any uh, questions about the consent agenda? There's been a motion to approve. Is there a second? Thanks, Kelly. Motion to second to approve the consent agenda. Uh, being no questions, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. This time, public comments. Do we have anybody from the public that would like to address the policy body? I know Kathy Sexton's in the audience. Does she want to address us? No. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. <laughs> All right. Moving on to new business um, action. We have an action item. It's the WAMPO funding project selection criteria changes. This is the item that's been delayed a couple of times. Uh, so Kristen Zimmerman will be presenting. Mr. Chair, good afternoon. Uh, I'm here today to present to you a recommendation that's coming from your Transportation Advisory Committee uh, for your consideration and action regarding the project selection criteria that's being proposed to be used during the WAMPA funding cycle that's scheduled to take place this spring. Uh, this project selection criteria is the objective criteria that will be used by the selection committee members uh, to evaluate the candidate projects and ultimately make a recommendation on which projects to fund with WAMPO funding. And then, of course, that list will ultimately come back to this board for, final, uh, for your consideration and final action. 
So we uh, generally carry out this cycle every two years, and uh, this year's cycle would be used to award construction funding to projects in the federal fiscal years 2021 and 2022, as well as it would also provide an opportunity for additional funding, if warranted, to projects that are currently programmed uh, for WAMPA funding in the years 2019 and 2020. So before we get uh, to the proposed changes to the criteria, I did want to spend just a minute reviewing uh, the criteria that we used last time around in 2016, and then I'll turn it over to my colleague Chris Upchurch, and he'll go over the specific changes that are being proposed for this time around. So as a reminder, we're proposing to keep things generally the same as we did uh, back in 2016. Uh, we do want to make some small changes to address some housekeeping items uh, that we'd like to clean up that we learned from the cycle uh, last time in 2016. And we also were uh, wanting to test a couple of new ideas uh, that we could possibly use for our next long-range plan uh, that uh, Phil and Chris uh, talk, talked about earlier in our workshop. So uh, if, you've, if you're curious and like a chance, the proposed criteria are in your packet if you haven't had a chance to look through it yet. Okay, so in 2016, the criteria uh, consisted of three large categories. Uh, the first category was consistency with the MOVE 2040 investment strategy. This had to do with uh, asking the question, how well does the candidate project align with the MOVE 2040 investment strategy? Uh, how well does will it move the ball forward in terms of achieving, uh, achieving what we wanted to with the MOVE 2040 uh, plan? And as a reminder, that investment strategy was to preserve and maintain the uh, condition and function of the existing transportation system, to stabilize public transit service, to address system reliability, and to expand mode choices and to improve safety. So it's really asking the question, how well does the candidate project uh, uh, align with this investment strategy. The second big uh, area of criteria area had to do with regional significance, and that's really asking the question, how important is the project to the overall WAMPO region as opposed to uh, how important is it to a local municipality? And the last big area had to do with MOVE 2040 goals, or rather achievement of those goals. So how well does the project advance these goals? How well does it move the ball down the field in terms of, of making improvements on the goals we defined, which were cho choice and connectivity, economic vitality, freight movement, infrastructure condition, quality of life, safety, and system reliability. So for example, it's asking questions like, is this project located at a location that's had a history of a lot of uh, traffic car crashes, uh, injuries and fatalities associated with those crashes? Is, is this project going to help us reduce uh, fatalities and serious injuries that are taking place uh, as a result of motor vehicle traffic? So with that uh, overview of just uh, sort of the, the framework that we used last time. I'm going to turn over to Chris, and he's going to go over the specific changes we're proposing uh, for this time around. Hello again. So we're going to be making changes to uh, two of these areas and adding a fourth one. Uh, in, the, for, in the regional significance area, about a year and a half ago, this body adopted a formal definition of regional significance for the WAMPO region. Uh, that was a project of uh, quite a bit of effort uh, led by uh, Janet Miller, your former colleague. Uh, so we're going to update the selection criteria to use that formally adopted definition of regional significance rather than the old interim one that we used uh, two years ago when we were doing this. So this is mostly housekeeping, just using that latest formally adopted definition. For the goal-related project selection criteria, uh, this is an example, you know, going back to our workshop of why the goals are important. Each of these draws from the, the MOVE 2040 goals. But we found some issues last time around with the way those goals were turned into hard and fast criteria for selecting projects. And those issues really came up in two areas. One of them, there was some redundancy among the, the various criteria. Uh, we had a couple different criteria which kind of sort of measured the same thing but in slightly different ways and the project selection committee did not find that overlap very useful. So some of the changes here are to eliminate some of that redundancy. 
Uh, the other perhaps larger issue is we had a couple of criteria that did not do a good job of meaningfully differentiating projects. Uh, when you have a criteria where every project that's been submitted gets the exact same rating, it really doesn't help the selection committee differentiate among them. So we've tried to clear up some of those issues. So diving into the nitty gritty here, we had a economic vitality criteria that looked at both connectivity to employment and connectivity to freight. And what we've deci decided to do is to split that in half. The connectivity to employment part of that is getting rolled in with our quality of life criteria into a new criteria we're calling economic vitality and quality of place. And that looks at connectivity to employment, healthcare, and schools. So sort of looking at these set of destinations where people want to go. The other half, the freight half of the old economic vitality criteria is getting merged with our existing freight uh, uh, selection criteria. The old freight selection criteria just looked at whether the project was on the WAMPO freight network. Uh, and as it turned out, not many of them were. So what we're doing is grouping that with the freight half of the economic vitality criteria. So with this new criteria, you'll essentially get credit uh, either if you are on the WAMPO freight network or if you provide connectivity to a major uh, freight facility, a major shipper or receiver or warehouse. And we think that captures the freight dimensions a little better than just looking at the WAMPO freight network. Uh, finally, we're making some changes to our safety criteria. This is more looking at the grading rubric than the criteria itself. Uh, and this is one where we're doing this to better differentiate projects. Uh, this is the criteria where every single uh, project got the same rating last time around. So we've tweaked that, uh, we got some feedback from the TAC, and uh, we should do a better job. We're looking at the, the number of accidents in, in, uh, in each, uh, the bounds of each project. And that should do a better job of differentiating, sort of saying these projects will have the biggest impact on safety, these will have sort of a medium impact, and these will have a, a lesser impact. So those are the changes to the goal-based uh, selection criteria. Then the fourth area that we're adding to those three that Kristen talked about is one related to trends. And this is really something that's uh, more in the lines of uh, testing something that we may get deeper into in the next MTP, as we were talking about in the workshop. Uh, looking at how well these projects address some of the trends that uh, you've, you've heard about at, uh, at earlier sessions. So we picked out a few of these, mostly demographic related. Um, these are ones that we have, uh, have some harder data on. And we're essentially taking a subjective approach to this. We will give each project sponsor an opportunity to make the case for how their project addresses these trends. And then the project selection committee will take a look at, uh, at how they've made that case and judge the impact of that. Um, you know, we, when we talked about those three selection criteria areas, they were sort of ranked as tier one was the investment strategy, tier two was regional significance, and tier three was the, the goal-related criteria. This would be a tier four, and that sort of does indicate it's, it's lesser in importance uh, compared to the others. So uh, those are the changes to the selection criteria. Um, do we have any, any questions on this? Sure. Yeah, I have lots of questions. Or, or comments, I, I guess. Uh, well, I just have a concerns with a lot of these things because it gets, I mean, it goes back to some of the things I said earlier as far as return on investment and usage, okay? So I'll just go through these so everybody can hear them. And, 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 you know, basically, when it comes to regional significance, there's a couple things that stick out. Some things like bicycle and pedestrian facilities. A project that includes a minimum of a 10-foot off-street path will be presumed to be regionally significant. Not related to usage or number of people or anything like that. Or, um, and, and throughout this, it's, it seems well, for projects and some of these criteria puts roads and bicycles and, and, and uh, walking paths on the same level when to me, if you look at return on investment, they wouldn't be the same because we don't really, really look at usage. So I suspect you'll get a lot of projects that have a 10-foot off-street path because they're automatically regionally significant, which you know, things with respect to transit, if it's existing or enhances something existing, it's presumed. But 
no, no evaluation as far as cost effectiveness use or like this. Uh, we go on to uh, the tier three quality of life, economic vitality, quality of life, which sounds good. It's very hard to put into objective terms, though. But we, we talk about how it provides connectivity to healthcare facilities, employment centers, and schools. Well, that's good, but we don't have what about museums or recreation or retail or parks or churches or anything. So all those things are part of connect, you know, the same sort of thing. And then it says, you know, connecting it through a pedestrian network is the same as a roadway. Um, I'll just go through. And then, well, a tier four addressing trends, it's, as you said, it's subjective, which gets away from the objective criteria that, um, you know, and so that's troubling. I'd like to see more usage-based requirements. Uh, you spend a million dollars on this project that connects five people a day, or a million dollars on this project that connects 5,000 people a day, I mean, as far as usage, you know, by this, it, it, it's going to be scored the same if it's a if it's a roadway or, or a bike path that it doesn't matter how many people are being used it's used by and I think that's important so those are some of my concerns uh, with the limited resources and I think we need to look at more objective usage I don't know how you do it but not just that it connects but we have to have reasonable belief that it's going to be used for transportation okay any other comments? I'd like to make one. I wasn't going to, but I, I will. But Richard, that's part of the presentation when the cities come in and pitch their projects. They talk about that stuff. And that's part of, of how they get selected and get into the, the dollar side of it. You get a project into the system, but to get it into the five-year tip, you have to be the better package. And the sidewalk, is an enhancement, but it doesn't help if you don't carry any people with it. So that's up to the the small team we put together to do a recommendation for projects for the five year plan. And you and usage. You, you can talk about it, but it's hard to explain until you go in that room and try to sell one. So right. And so by the criteria I was given here and you know, it doesn't right. You know. And I would assume that uh, usage or, or data is is a big component of the dis, of the decision when the, which? of the decision usage and, and data is a large component of the TAC evaluation which I would agree Richard I mean it's I guess I'm a little confused I guess but that should be in the question maybe this doesn't actually reflect re this process that gets you there then if this you're using a, that this is a guideline to get a proposal in there then you have to defend it amongst all the proposals once you get into the selection process so it's it's kind of an outline on how to get your proposal in but it doesn't mean you're going to get it there just because you're putting a 10-foot sidewalk in doesn't mean it's going to make it into the selection process or into the final no, but if it's a 10-foot sidewalk, it's presumed to be regionally significant. Does that really make sense? Uh, the criteria states that the project includes a minimum 10-foot off-street bike pa or off-street path or dedicated on-street bicycle facility that has demonstrated impacts on the regional region's economic activity. So if it just has a 10-foot bike path, that doesn't mean it's automatically regionally significant it must have a demonstrated impact, whether it's to schools, to health facilities, to major employment centers, shopping centers, that's what is, is being looked for, not just that there's a bike path. There. Well, I wasn't sure if it went to both of these or just the 10 foot, but even with that, I mean, what's a demonstrated economic activity? I mean, and, and why is it a 10 foot? That's something that has to be that Where's the 10 foot? Why comes not from why not eight? Why not? The, the 10 foot is federal. Is, yeah, it's a six foot is, is enough for two people to walk side by side comfortably. The 10 foot is where you get the bicycle pedestrian 
combination aspect. We had a it. project a couple years ago come through, and they had to narrow the sidewalk down from 10 feet to 5 feet because of some obstructions, and it got thrown out because of that, because of the federal guideline. That makes that doesn't make sense to me. If it if it works, it works. I mean, um. I, I might just add that you know that. Uh, updated definition of regional significance that Chris noted that the board adopted uh, 18 months ago or so um, that's in here now is really kind of the definition of what is considered regionally significant and what's really important um, sort of it's what's eligible I guess or what meets the criteria but as part of this process the selection committee members you know are asked to decide uh, of all the projects and give a ranking of excellent good acceptable or unacceptable and essentially answering the question an excellent rating would be the project meets the definition of regional significance that, that we're talking about now and is of major importance to the transportation system of the WAMP, the entirety of the WAMPO region so that's why we're, we're really relying on the a lot of the discretion of the committee members to to determine well what is important to the region you know does it meet the definition and then how important is it to the region how important is this project to the region that's correct that's correct yeah that's that's a that's a, a great a great suggestion and we're hoping that the you know that kind of conversation can definitely be part of of um, you know reevaluating the project selection criteria question so if uh, maybe Park City and Kichai and Bel Air wanted to put together something to connect uh, does that give it more regional significance it, it's in, so. in that very theoretical sense it's hard, hard to say but you know connecting different communities different parts of the re region is one of the things that would play into how highly something like that would get rated on the regional significance criteria. I think if you showed that you were connecting Broadway, I-135, 135 with 254 going that way, that would carry some significance as well. Or if there's new uh, manufacturing or something on along a, str along a street that's now got big trucks. Schools schools so those kind of things that have an economic impact for sure <clears throat> I think if you're also Good. looking at things from a kind of like an overall aspect when you look at the fact that spirit air there's like a thousand people that live in Derby that work at spirit and there's a, a bike path on Oliver should that carry more significance if more people took the bike path and used it to going to from Derby to, to Spirit? Because it saves the roadway if fewer cars use that roadway. Uh, but it's just those are the kinds of things that we have to think about in, in terms of tying different functions and different systems uh, that might be better for the overall infrastructure and equipment usage as well. I guess that's a good example. I understand what you're saying, but, but you can say that having a bike path or a sidewalk is going to help that issue, but if nobody uses it, because then, because there's a lot of people there, I mean, I, it doesn't mean that it's going to be used like people think. I mean, I, I look at the bike paths and the sidewalks we have now and, and kind of look, and I, I look and all the bike lanes and how many people are using them for transportation now how many people have I used to work at Boyd okay <laughs> people go in lots of places and that sounds good but I don't think a lot of them are going to start riding their bike to work I could be wrong but you know even from Boyd to Derby if you're not going to walk you're not going to ride a bike most of the time it just, it just doesn't happen so I mean that's why I personally don't put a project that connects with bike versus a road, at least apparently to me on this, it seems to put it on a level playing field. If nothing else, it's because of usage. I mean, even if you did get some people to ride their bike, you're not even going to get thousands of people to do it. 
to, you know. No, probably not, but perhaps in the future you may, or just this near future. There's all kinds of circumstances that could arise that you have to plan for. <laughs> That's counterintuitive. I know, I'll go back to my analysis. People used to walk, they used to bike, they used to ride horses, they used to take, you know, horse and buggies, but now <laughs> they have cars, okay? And I don't see us getting, wanting to back away from cars and start walking more. I just don't see that happening. They use the queue line it's a lot. It's wishful now. thinking. Huh? <laughs> they use the queue line a lot now. All right. Well, I think we understand what you're saying, <laughs> Richard. Thank you. I'd like to make a comment. The majority of this is already in the 2040 plan. And all they've done is made a couple updates to it and recommendations, and that's what we're trying to get approval for today. And TAC did approve this. Um, all right, any more discussion? Okay, so <clears throat> in, in, in lieu of all this and, and recent uh, project evaluation, I, uh, I wanted to make a, a motion myself that uh, that I, instead of saying it, I, I asked if, uh, I submitted and asked if they could bring it up. Now, I'm not sure if this would be in addition to the project criteria or if this is a separate motion related to the selection process. But can you pull that up? Do you guys have it? Do you guys have a motion? No, we don't? Okay. Yep. Did you put list options or anything, Kristen? Okay. I, I, I don't, I don't, I, no, this is new, this is new news okay. to me. The action that is the, the TAC recommended action. Okay. You're going to amend that? Pete? I, you want to amend what yeah, they recommend? Yeah, I think amend would probably be the. Without it, without it going back to the TAC? You want to just add this? The TAC hasn't seen it. Uh, well, all TAC did is amend and the recommendations to the existing document. We didn't do any tweaking for how projects get in there that I'm aware of. I think which is what you're talking about. Okay. Well, yeah, I would like. Uh, well, somehow I would like. Uh, it, it, here's my. So we talked about sidewalks and whatever but here's a problem that i have with the uh, evaluation and the executive committee talked about it is some of these projects are in there at a cost that was submitted from a 2015 estimate that had a four percent increase per year in uh, uh cost of living or or uh, the other inflation uh steel may have gone up some and this and that and Construction inflation can be different from regular inflation, but it's all rather. So I think today, to consideration on the last year of projects, what we're talking about here for 21 and 22, I think it's a skewed uh, process that has, it's, it's 2015 projects that were selected from. Now, they're in there, and I don't mind keeping those projects in there, but I would like some kind of component to where the the uh, sponsor of the project resubmit with real numbers, a reevaluation, so we don't get hit with end of the year, we got an extra million and a half because of this or that, and, and uh, that's what I would like to somehow insert that. I'd like to, and I'd like to ask that maybe on that fourth year, that between now and during the process, the a return on investment attempt is included in, in that in that evaluation of those projects. So basically, I'm kind of asking if everybody would, the projects that are in there, they're resubmitted in there with a with a, a new scrubbing, uh, and I think everybody could do that fairly quickly, for for evaluation. But I don't know if that's uh, maybe our our legal counsel could say how is that a separate item that that uh, i add to an agenda or something or um uh, i i 
uh, Chairman, I think that it's an appropriate motion. I think right now you have recommendations from the TAC. Um, ultimately, the TAC is an advisory committee to this bot body as the TPB. You have the ultimate control and authority over what the project selection criteria will be. I think what you're proposing is an additional element to the project selection criteria that have been proposed, and it's an overlay requiring for existing projects in the queue to have an additional scrubbing. Um, so we have real numbers uh, moving forward. I think that's an acceptable um, motion and basically, I think what you're asking for is a motion to authorize approval of the proposed selection criteria with an additional um, criteria that existing projects be resubmitted with current numbers and in the fourth year an attempt to be made at some sort of a uh, return on investment criteria evaluation. I think that's the motion that you're making, if I may uh, have restated that correctly. Um, as, I, as I understood what you said, I think that's right. Okay. Or do we back that to another group that's uh, impartial that would come up with the same ROI for every project? I mean, that's a big request, really. Certainly coming up with, with funding or, or, or a, a more accurate accounting of what it's going to be because things change. The ROI is two, but I think that we're, we have so many unknowns with that already. I don't know if I would put that into this motion at this point. My recommendation to you. Uh, un understood. I, sometimes the, the, the speed of government, if you don't address it sometime, then it has trouble about? getting addressed. <laughs> I, I, really, it's more like throwing it out there. I think the TAC and the, and the staff would be challenged to say, yeah, uh oh, we better call 1 800 ROI investment group Christian, and Christian find when, out some uh, criteria. When all the but I, I respect what you're saying for sure. Are represented. That's up to the presenter to say how much money they are wanting. That's correct. We're not yes, going to take what was there previously and just add 4% to it and say, this is what it is. We're wanting them to present as to how many dollars they are wanting, not what our 4% increase is. That's correct. We're asking for what they're requesting, and also we will for sure ask for an updated cost estimate right. on whatever is submitted. We, we want costs to be as reasonable and up-to-date as possible. Yeah, the, the 4% is... The assumption here is that the project price is going to go down, but there's a risk there it could go the other way, too. So I, just, I just did mine and went down and by uh, seven hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Can I, I, one, I would have one more question on your. <laughs> it said the word four years. Was your request that um, if your project's landing within the next four years, would you require me to have an update on the cost? Or if my project is really fifteen years down the road, why? I mean, I shouldn't need to do that yet. So was that part of your requirement, like a time frame of? I, I wasn't the the fifteen year out projects was not my well, I, my I thought process. In your request, though, was it like within four years? Mm -hmm. if your projects within four years refresh the price. Right. Are, you, are we talking through twenty two then, Pete? Yes, so the, the twenty two. Next projects that we're looking at are the twenty one twenty two projects. And you're looking at wanting ROI in those. 21, 22 projects? I don't think 21 could have it done in time. We don't think we've... The committee will done. be picking 21, could be. 22, mm -hmm. though. They, uh, so the... All right, the so fiscal government year-end ends September 30th. So we are now in 2019 government. Yeah. So... Um, Again, I get, I get a little confused on the out years, but really, if we're, if Wampo's always got a four-year, you know, when we see our our so tick sheet, it's now a fourth year. funded up through twenty. Right. So the next project's funding will be twenty-one, twenty-two, and you're wanting a ROI in those projects. Well, I would prefer it, but I respect the policy body. If 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 it's something we can't do, then that's fine. I mean, not fine, but 
what you're really asking for is anything that hasn't started yet to get resubmitted. Correct. That, that's that's a good point. My question that's would be, point. why wouldn't we approve this as it was recommended to this board and then have another additional amendment for the project selection and keep it clean, keep the wording changed clean, and then have another restriction added if that's what you want to do for our lives for future projects? Okay. But I guess we're going to want the criteria what ROI is to be able to vote on it. Bill, so, I've got a question for you. Is there is there time to do the ROI for 21? I thought this was probably more focused towards the 22 projects. I would think it would be the 22 would be the first time we could come up with something that's more comprehensive and more, I guess, takes into consideration all the factors that need to be taken. But I would say 21 is 21 probably should be set with existing criteria. Are we going to have the committee meet twice to pick the 21 and then meet again to pick the 22? If you do the ROI, that'd probably have to be the. That's the only way it works. Yeah. Because right now the right. committee is setting agree. to pick two Reason. years, not one right. year. So if you're going to use different criteria for 21 and 22, then you're going to have to have two separate meetings as far as project selections and what they're going to do. I see it very tough to do that type of situation for the project selection committees. I could see your point, yeah. And, and for the individuals that already have their projects in the 21-22 to be presented at this point. There'd be some problem. I've got a question too. Does the city have a format or something that would be used for the ROI? I, I, I understand how they work, well, but we, I don't know what's going to be in it, right? And what's going to be considered. Right? We, we do, and, and you've seen that in the, what we've done on street maintenance, but in terms of a broader uh, scope of projects like we're talking about now, not as much, no. And so we've talked. Uh, I think Phil is the one that originally talked about the ROI uh, concept, and we thought it had merit, but we recognize that we're going to have to do a lot of work together to, to make it operational. It makes a lot of sense when you think about the limited dollars that we have, you know, and going beyond just the concept of regional significance, you know, I think it makes sense to look at how far we could stretch that dollar. Um, but no, there's going to be a lot that needs to go into that thought process. I have a concern with this saying we were going to require something, we don't know how we're going to do it, so. You know, I think what Commissioner Ranzel talked about is, is in some ways the concept, and that is you have to measure benefit. So we know what the cost side is going to be, but it's, then it's a matter of how do we compare that to the benefit. And I, and I, I think we can quantify that in many cases. Thanks. I, don't, I haven't heard anybody disagree that ROI is a good thing. What I've heard is what is ROI going to be uh, is it the number of people that apply. use it, as Mr. Ranzau says, or is it uh, the number of cars that use it? What is ROI? I'd be the first to admit to you that it's, I'm not technical enough to come up with the criteria that, that need that. We'd need some assistance in, in developing criteria as well as the, the quantifiers of how we get there. I don't think anyone's disagreeing that ROI is, is a, a bad thing. I think we're saying it's a good thing. How soon would people need to be able to present this ROI? I guess I'm Fair question too. How far <laughs> out? I mean, or, I guess I don't know the, t the time frame. How, how soon are you going to be presenting these? Is it six months, a year, or? This spring is right. what my understanding spring? that projects for 21 and 22 are going to be presented. So you'd have to have the criteria by, with, we're in spring now. Right. And the other thing actually, as we already talked about, we know that the state has a 33-month time frame. So if we do not move now for projects, we're not going to make the 33 months, and there are going to be people sitting out there that won't make their projects on the 33-month time frame. So the more things we start throwing in, it, the tougher it's going to be to meet the 33-month time frame for people's projects. If I'm mistaken. Would that be why you want to do the third-year project using the existing criteria? Right. That was the theory, because the third year would be and difficult I, to adjust. 
can I make a recommendation <clears throat> that maybe force. you put a little team together to try to determine how we want to do an RI, what it's going to look like, and what we want to put in it, and have that come back soon? I mean, like within 30 days or so, to come back with some kind of a recommendation? Well, I think we could probably know, uh, maybe not know the exact, we could probably know a time frame of how difficult it would be if we engaged uh, uh, if we engage WSU uh, to uh, to do uh, an attempt to tell them what, and they could say, well, this is going to be a big task, or they'd say, well, yeah, we could probably do that fairly easily. I think it, the independence of it would be, I don't think we ought to do it internally. Somebody needs to figure out so it's, what the baseline is going to be and how we're going to put it together and what we're going to use it and what the end result should be. So, I mean... Right. Yeah, because if the city's putting the project together, they need to know what criteria to present right. Right. as what ROI right. is in their presentation. I don't think anybody can make this, will be a, a, this will be a longer, more complex approach. We're going to want to engage our partners uh, at the state and federal level to see what they're aware of in terms of best practices. Um, and uh, they're going to be mul multiple facets to the benefit calculation that's going to relate it, be related to the construction project itself as well as then the benefit to economic from economic development so um, understanding uh, i think phil does this did you not run this by the federal partners one or one person already talked about ri at one time with them and you didn't get a good response not here today so i'll just say you never get a good response <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh, i'd agree with that yeah I, agree with I, I think mayor armstrong's point is probably the most important and that is right. do we separate off 21 and then ask the committee to come back and do 22 after we have some other criteria or do you keep the two together and then implement after that point that point yep. and so i that's a good point. That's a good defining. I would be. They didn't really have a year then. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Could actually be going into the next MTP with it is what we're what you're talking about yeah. at that point is what it amounts to. And then after that, we can really define also the the, the five year look stuff that we've talked about. In, yeah. I would agree with that. And we are in the process of bringing a consultant on board to, to help us with some operational stuff and maybe they can have some ideas what viable ROI criteria might be and how to quantify it. I, th I think it's a real good tool you're headed toward, but I'm not sure how you apply it yet. So that's, that's where I'm coming from, so. Okay, so uh, based on uh, the Bruce comments. I think ahead. Pete adding the ability of some way to make sure that they're re-looking at the dollars is a good deal too. Because I think as we've talked about and, and, and uh, Mr. Layton's talked about, we want to stretch those dollars as far as we can. And if those aren't realistic dollars that we're looking at, then we may not be approved to approve as many projects as we want to approve. So I think it's a good thing they truly re-look at what their project cost really is. Yeah, because it also, then a community might say, you know, um, before we were contributing 20%, but maybe now we'd like to resubmit and maybe improve their position by saying 30% or something, If depending on what your current budgets are. I think it's everybody's advantage, all the city's advantage to uh, make sure we have more money to, to spend. Resubmit, yeah, more money to look at. As I just said, I, re I redid our project. Mine came in $700,000 less than what the 4% had done. So I'm looking, I would think we'd end up with more money out there. Right. Good point. Okay. From an engineering standpoint, okay. is in the initial project, all you really have got is your base numbers of your quantities, how many square feet of asphalt, how many tons of aggregate, and then you can go off of current construction prices. But when you really get the good numbers is when you start the design. So if we have the cost estimate required to be turned in at certain percentages of the design, that's when you really know. Otherwise, you know, if I've, I've got a few projects in the um, MTP right now, but they're not even on our radar for constructing, they're on there just in case. 
those projects, I don't think we really need to look at. It's the ones that are getting ready for construction, having those cost estimates submitted to WAMPO in addition to KDOT at regular intervals. Great, great point, Ann. Okay. You know, I support your, your additions, but I still have issues with the underlying things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. We can talk about that. Again. <laughs> Okay, so uh, it seems like there's a general consensus. How do we uh, formulate this? So we're clear. I mean, are, are we hearing that the this group is interested in uh, looking at developing an ROI for potentially 2021 and, and 2022, or just 2022? Just 2022. That's not what I heard. 2023 on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we obviously need. I'm hearing different things from two, different we're, folks we're probably, here. So we need we're saying two separate. You're gonna we're gonna have two separate meetings, right? We're gonna look at 2021 under today's world. 2022 will be an attempt to put an ROI instrument in there. And and that's not what I heard. But costs. But reevaluate the cost components on on all the. Mr. Chair, oh, my yeah. Tell Again, me if I, I think we ought to vote on the motion as it was presented on this document and then have another motion to add after this is voted on for what the changes are going to be or recommendation and keep them clean. That way we've got two separate yeah. entities. So what I, uh, yeah, if I could address that briefly. Um, we have a motion on the floor. That was never seconded, so technically the motion dies to lack of a second, so we're back at square zero. You have multiple options on how you can proceed. You can have a motion and a second to approve what's in writing, as uh, Tom thought, just mentioned. Paul, a what's point that? of order here. I uh -huh. thought we were in discussion. It can't die when we're in discussion at this point for lack of a second. We, uh, there was actually never a second to... to uh, I'll second it. Oh, what's that? I'll second it. Oh, okay. If the motion's been made and seconded, then we're in a point of discussion and there needs to be a vote on it uh, before we can move on to any other type of a motion. So. Okay. Did you get that down, the motion? Who motioned it originally? And, and second. By. I will restate the motion. Uh, the motion was that uh, the project selection criteria proposed by staff to be approved with uh, or proposed by the TAC um, be approved with two additions um, for the uh, for the uh, submitting entities to provide um, current cost estimates for all of the years um, within the uh, new TIP and the second edition for the fourth year of the TIP, the 2022 year, um, that some type of a return on investment uh, criteria evaluation be implemented. That was the motion. I guess I would say I didn't hear that last part in the actual motion. That was about what year it would start. Um, we could double check. Uh, uh, Tro Troy, that's a great point. I think I think it was in the actual motion, but we could double check. We could go back and look. Um, have to listen to it. I I do recall putting that in the motion, and if we don't, if that's something that's disagreeable to the board, obviously we can have a vote and then have a subsequent motion that excludes I'd like to know that. Who made so. the motion? Uh, the motion was made by Pete, and uh, was seconded by you. I think what Pete said, he wanted to add something to it. He hadn't that he actually made a motion to approve it at that point. If we go back and look at your tape, you'll find there was no motion made. Okay. It, all went, okay. it all went directly to the, it all went directly to discussion. There was no set motion made. As part of the discussion, that's okay. why I would like to have seen them separated. Right. Well I wanted people to vote and just move on basically so we decide what we're gonna do. Okay. I, okay the the motion that was read, uh, that was stated just a second ago by council, uh, is the one that I would move to, to as a motion for the floor. Is there a second? Second. 
Okay. Motion as stated and has been seconded. Any other comments? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> All right. We need to do a raise of hands. Uh, all in or which ones you ask Let's do the ones that are in favor. Raise your hand. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All opposed, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow. I, I would I would like to go on record saying again, we've just passed something we don't know how we're gonna implement and you're gonna try to do it in the next year, so it could be interesting. Well, if we, you know, if we find out that uh, return on investment's impossible to do, then we can uh, come back and uh, make it a motion on the floor to eliminate the return on investment component. If that's all right, I would agree there. So are we going to listen to the tape to see what the actual motion was? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was a recorded it, and I think here's the, the you, motion was I read just, a second you ago. You didn't really make a motion in the beginning. This was just your opinion. So that's correct. Uh, what? Therefore, what? you making a motion now, and then somebody seconded it. Uh, a great point that's been brought up. Parliamentary procedure. Yes, great point that's been brought up. I will tell you, I do recall there being a motion that was formally made that was seconded by Bruce at the end of discussion. As a point of clarity, there was a motion reconfirming that motion be put on the floor made by Pete, and then it was seconded by Cindy, and then there was, so regardless of whether on the tape, my recollection's actually correct that the motion was originally made. It was then confirmed and made again by Pete and seconded by Cindy. So there was a legitimate motion either way that was voted on by this board on the floor at the time of the vote. And people disagree with that. But yeah. I, I think there was multiple motions. I think there's eight people. The <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I, I, I apologize for the confusion. Uh, One I, thing that could be done by the board if they desire, if there's confusion or a desire to move forward in a different different way you could make a motion that effectively disapproves what was just adopted by the board anybody can make that motion and second it so if you want to disapprove it there's nothing parliamentary wise that prevents this board from doing whatever it wishes to do if there's a desire to disapprove what was just approved um, you can just have a motion in a second that that clarifies the current board's intent regardless It doesn't require a motion to reconsider on behalf, I mean, from someone on the prevailing side? Uh, great question, Bob. No, it won't require a motion to reconsider because it's a new action taken by the board. <laughs> <laughs> All experience to the contrary, yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Excuse me. Okay. I think, I think that, I think as a whole, I think if you step back, I think we all agree that the ROI component is important, and it's just a matter of whether it applies to 22 or not. And I think we've got time to make that, to work through that. If we're not comfortable going forward several months from now, and we're just not going to get an ROI calculation that makes us comfortable, then you can't use it in 22, and we're going to have to come back and recognize that the existing criteria will, will be held. And are we asking for project selections to be made? We're uh, waiting for uh, action on the board today, and then I'm hoping to contact project sponsors tomorrow with uh, kind of a call are for those, projects. Are those projects <coughs> sponsors going to be presenting for 21 or just for 21 and 22? Well, after the vote today, I suspect just, just 2021. Yeah, because I don't know how you present for, I don't know how you present for 22 no. if you don't know what it is. Right. I mean, part of the application packet, the call for projects, is, you know, we announced the we're having a call for projects, and we need sponsors to fill out forms and and fill out project selection criteria. And correct. You know, and I guess nothing. then we're going to need to know what the time frame is as to when to be able to present 22 projects to make sure we meet the 33 month deadline. Then I just it's I think it's a real bad situation. 
this yeah, group's going to have to provide some training on how to do the ROI with the road project. Too. Well, they don't know what the ROI is at this point. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just from the staff perspective, off the top of my head, I would not expect us to be calling for 2022 projects with ROI until sometime in uh, calendar, you know, next calendar year. It doesn't do a whole lot of good planning for communities that know they need to be doing their engineering for these projects in that length of time frame. You know, we don't do things as a city in just a that length of short of length of time when we're talking about several million dollars in projects. So you're hamstringing the communities that are going to be presenting and asking them to do that. Okay, well, Bruce, out of the respect to some of the anxiety here, I, I'd be glad to make a motion that we withdraw, the, that uh, we overrule the previously approved motion and we go, well, and then they won't go to a new motion. But I'm, I make a motion to withdraw what was just uh, approved. Is there a second? OK, seconded by Jim. Any other discussion? Um, yes. The motion to withdraw um, can stand, and there can be a vote on that. You can also phrase that as a motion to reconsider it as what Bob had originally referenced both terminology is acceptable. So it's a motion to withdraw, a motion to reconsider. It's finally framed. Okay. Well, the motion was withdraw to withdraw, and Jim seconded. So we have one on the floor. Any other discussion? I mean, we have to start all over with the thing. Then we'll need a new motion after that. Can we not have a motion just to withdraw the RRI language from what we approved? That's what we have left then. I I would rather just just okay. Start. Just, for, just for clarity. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion and the second on the floor, signify say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Motion uh, carried. All right. What's the new motion? <clears throat> yes. I would like to motion to approve the project selection criteria changes, grading rubric changes as proposed and direct staff to research the ROI for presentation at a later time. Okay. Does that meet the, well? I would have preferred they be separate, but that's acceptable. Is that a second? Oh, she second. You seconded oh, I'm it, sorry. didn't you? Or no, I didn't say a word. <laughs> no, I'm not going to second it. And can you just repeat your motion, please? We approve Into the microphone. That we approve the project selection criteria changes and grading rubric changes as proposed and direct staff to research the ROI for presentation at a later time. About the new funding numbers that we were wanting. The funding numbers shall be presented by projects, sponsors, in association with their due dates 2K dot. So that's part of Second that. <clears throat> so if they come up with something, if staff comes up to something, they can throw it into the 21-22? Staff comes up with something, no. They would have to present the ROI information to the board as a separate entity for consideration by the board before adopting those criteria for project selection. That's something the staff needs to come up with. We need to review before we can consider it. But if they come up with it, can that ROI be used in 21-22? There's no time for 21. 22, it's... There, there's no time frame in your motion. Yeah. Didn't need, oh, I there, see. Well, I'm, I'm saying that we... That would come at a later that date. We just, that'll come at a later date for inclusion, but the project selection criteria to be used We're talking about for a later, 21, 22, later date after 21, 22. The project selection criteria for 21, 22 is what is proposed by staff at this time. The ROI is not figured into the project selection criteria. As long as ROI is not in 21, 22. Yes. You're excluding 22 because it's possible you could have something in time to do. I would exclude it for the time being because we have no, if it's going to take, it could take up to a year to get that taken care of. 
We have no clue what it is, and it's going to take a while to get that developed. Wichita has already said they have looked at it, and they have not even gone forward with it because of the amount of work involved. I don't think this body can formulate something that everybody can agree upon in the time frame that we need to give communities the chance to put together their, pro their proposals for selection for 21 or 22. What? Okay. Your motion doesn't what? preclude doing it for 22 if, I actually agree with you, but if we happen to get an ROI up in time and can implement it, then you could have a, a vote at a later date and implement it. I'd make did an that, amendment, I think, try to make an I, yeah. amendment to that motion that it, that the ROI not be used in 2122 criteria. I would be agreeable to that amendment. There's an amendment to the original motion that was agreeable uh, to the motion. Yes. The maker of the motion. I also agree since I seconded the motion. Okay. All parties agree. Amended motion stands on the floor. And any other discussion? Well, Clarification? Well, so with this motion, even if we could come up with an ROI for 22, we can use it. That's what the motion Correct. says. No, then I won't be supporting the motion because we could come up with something in time. You got a year. Potentially. No, I don't think communities can do it. But anyway, there's a motion. And David, if, uh, if we do come up with it in two weeks by miracle, and we decide at that moment that, you know, in, in the next WAMPO meeting, hey, we're ready to go, we could absolutely make a motion at that point to go ahead and use it for the 2022. Right now, what's the purpose of excluding it if there's a possibility? I would rather have it excluded and then included at a later date than include it and have no idea if we can even come up with something. But why don't we just go with 21 and let 22 we can figure out at a later date? <laughs> We just did the circle of life. I guess what we're saying, that's the exact same motion we just defeated. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, is there a reason that we can't push this off for a month while we think about this? It's, it seems like it's, we don't, we, we don't seem to have clarity. Ex I'm going to exactly call the question. I don't, uh, I don't think that the TAC on 21, I don't think we have much time on the TAC and the process. Yeah, I call question. question. Questions called. I think it's time. For, I think parliamentarily we have to vote. Okay. Can you remind us what we're voting on now? <laughs> this is a amended motion. All parties agreed for the amended motion to adopt the project selection criteria for 2018 with the submitting entities to provide current cost estimates and excluding the 21-22 ROI analysis until that to be presented by staff at a later date. And is that the amended motion that you uh, submitted? Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's been a motion and a second on the floor. <clears throat> Being no other conversation. I just... Tom, I know Pete. Pete's that's looking right. at me like, here you go again. I, I I think we've just made a motion that we're going to go look at ROIs, but we're not going to do anything with it for two years or out. And this could have been two motions where we would have had it as, as a second action item, and we could have gone and worked it and implemented it any time we want to. So I'll be voting against this. Okay. Again, motion is second on the floor. Any other comments? Being none, all in favor signify matter. by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. 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 <laughs> um, well, it's the opinion of the chair that it, it didn't pass. We could raise the hands again. So everybody that's in favor, signify, raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Against, opposed, raise your hand. Okay, four to whatever it is. Okay. We're back to the... I think we should go to Tom's original approach. Let's vote on this first. I would make the motion that we approve this as presented. Second. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> For the recommended action as listed on the... Uh, any other comments about that? 
Right. Now, once we do this, can we then make another motion to address this other issue? Yes, we can. Been a motion and a second. Um, no other comments. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Who tries to go home tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Mr. President. The motion on the recommended action is, is carried. Chair. Yes. Right. That's all right. I'd make a motion then that we, we make an amendment that uh, all of the, um, man, how did you put it? it was, so all, all of the projects that as they are submitted for the TIP have a updated and current um, cost estimate submitted cost estimate. to WAMPO. To WAMPO. Okay. Second. Hey, there's a motion on the floor for added a cost component to your submission. Any other discussion? That's starting in 2020. Yep, right, right now. Starting immediately. Well, is an amendment part of the action that we just took to that document? Great question. The the am amendment that the motion that was just made that was voted that was approved was to just approve the project selection criteria as presented. The motion to amend was just to amend the project selection criteria as directed by Troy. So that'll be the motion that's presented. So if you want Troy's amendment, um, suggest an amendment to be put into place on the project selection criteria that were just voted for approval, um, that would be what you're voting on. Answer your question, Donna. Okay. Any other comments? Being none. Uh, the motion is second on the floor. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Tom Jones, a nay. Okay, motion carried. Any other? That brings us to the ROI piece. The right. concern I have is, Mayor, if I understand you right, what you want are these projects. If uh, Tom, you had talked about an ROI amendment Right. Without date, right? I was talking about adding another item to the agenda today to instruct staff to go come up with a way to do an ROI on projects and then implement it instead of saying we're going to go do it and then try to figure out how. Right. So if that doesn't have a time frame, and let's say the body adopts that before the 2022 projects move forward, what I'm concerned about is your approach. If that, if because we take, we won't have any predictability for projects. You could be, they could be approved now, but if we get an ROI and adopt it, and there's a decision to adopt it for the 22 year, then we've, then that means they have to go back and resubmit. And so anybody in 22 won't have predictability. You need Correct. to have a deadline for when that ROI is approved, like six months prior or something, so give them time to, to do it. Right. And I think that, so the original motion had, 22 it had to be implemented for 22 or would take some action on the board later on to, to say no and I just don't know how communities how you go out and expect communities that have already been looking at projects since 2015 to now throw in ROI on top of it for a 2022 type project to it's not fair to the communities and the people that truly are there when we had a, a 2015 that we did at that time and the projects are in there now to throw our eye on top of people that may be looking for 2022 money now the 21 people didn't do it well okay 22 people you do it's not fair it is truly not fair to those people out there to do that to them I'm, I'm sands have shifted some already i mean we know people that were planning on 2022 projects are not all going to get funded so right we don't have enough money for them so and the I understand the process. I don't disagree with the process. It's just that we don't, we haven't identified how we want to implement and what we want to use to implement it until we do. I hate to see us lock us, ourselves down so that we can't implement and spend money in now years. And we're, we're heading that way. If you're headed in that direction, Tom, with a motion, I, I can support it without a time and implementation time because that, that, allow, that gives everybody the full breadth of decision later on when the model comes forward 
and, it, and they could, we could decide to apply it retroactively to 2022 projects, or we could say it begins in 2023. Again, I was just looking at it. If it was separate, it would be clean. So, and that's the only reason I voted against it. So, yes, and Is that something that we can just direct staff to do and put it on the agenda for next month as an sure. update with no motions, no yeah. action items? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. That way we at least get a feel for where we're at. How hard is it going to be? How hard? How much time? Yeah. Right. We'll just take that as a... The director can make a note. So we'll report back on the status of ROI in 30 days. Okay. There you go. Robust round of motions and motions. Okay, so moving on, uh, committee partnerships. The executive committee did meet, and we did talk about some of the stuff that we all just talked about, as well as uh, um, we talked about the uh, we're we're in agreement that uh, that Phil is able to go out and hire a, a contractor to fulfill the roles that uh, Glory was uh, performing. We think that might even be a benefit uh, because uh, if we use a company or a person that replaces and represents that on a part-time basis, they'd have access to other uh, uh, private entity uh, resources on stuff. So we're hoping that that'll prove to be be good. But we haven't hired anybody yet, right? Uh, the RFPs went out or will go out this week. Okay. He's going to issue an RFP this week. So. And then we discussed again the uh, favorable uh, uh, that you saw in the workshop about a, a five-year role after this 21 and 22. Then after that, it'll be more five-year uh, looks, rolling looks. So that was our discussion at the executive committee. Unless there was anything else, I don't recall. No. Okay. Uh, next is the uh, TAC uh, Transportation Advisory Committee, Tom. Uh, basically, you've covered on the executive committee some of the stuff we talked about at the TAC, and then we also worked item six, which got worked today here again. Uh, that's all we had. So, okay, there's, we've already beat that down, so I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then uh, the uh, partnership stuff. The nobody's here from the Federal Highway or from KDOT today. Or, no, you are. You have an update. I'm Sorry about that. But I, I just started in December, so. You did? Okay. Well, welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Tell us. Tell us. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Deb Gruber, I used to be a reporter. I can't believe that, that Richard almost didn't vote no on something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm the public affairs manager in Hutchinson, and Tom Hine um, is having his knees replaced with Okay. So you have any other news to report out of KDOT? You know, the green project is funded, so that's good. It's good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other business? Maybe yes, Richard, I tell us question. about I yeah. think there still might be a little confusion. I, on the issue that we just discussed a while ago, what, what is the issue with why it needs to be for 22 and why it can't go wait till 23? Don't ask me. And I don't, is there a reason why we're doing that and pushing that issue or, or a time frame? I... What's your question again, Richard? Is it, there's an intent to put an ROI in place for 2022, which some people have concerns they don't have time to do it. Why 2022 versus I mean, if we did 2023, it would probably pass, would it? Uh, that's so right. Is, we're is, gonna, there, is there? I think that what we're going to do, I, since it's the unknown, from my perspective, I think we're just going to we're going to look into how what kind of chore, chore is it going to be to include an ROI component, and then we'll get it back at the next meeting to report our findings. I guess what I'm saying was there a reason why we were pushing for 2022 specifically? What you end up yeah. getting into is you've got communities that are in 21 that are already doing right away. They're doing engineering and stuff like that. It's already in the process, and this ROI process could change something. Well, I get that. 
I think the push for 2022 is just to make sure that we're making the best decisions possible. And if we get new information with the ROI, that may change some of the decisions. I think that was the original intent behind it. But why 2022 instead of, let's say, 2023 as the beginning year to implement it? It could be. Was it just picked? I mean, there wasn't a specific reason. Oh, okay. Because what I'm saying is that would probably alleviate your opposition to this whole thing if you started it in 2023 instead of 2022. But I was afraid I was missing something. There was something and I didn't know, that we I didn't do know it in 2022. It, 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 I don't know what – I was, my was wondering is if you had, if you finally had an ROI component and everybody already had their stuff submitted, then the TAC could just plug in the ROI on all the information that was submitted and see if there's a, a one there, but instead of resubmitting, but that's all right. I mean, it's, we don't know. We don't know what the, the unknown is. is. The ROI would be calculated off the information you already have, so it would be yeah. relative. And it, and it may not be the deciding factor anyway. I think, the, I think the thought is that so much has changed since we initially submitted those projects. And, I mean, we've already, we've gotten together and identified, uh, you know, a regional priority in the North Junction. Uh, of course, that doesn't get factored in. And so the sooner you can get the ROI as part of the discussion, the, the better. And that's what Pete's talked about from yeah. the very beginning. So. Does anyone want to talk about how difficult it would be to do a motion to adjourn? <laughs> Moved. <laughs> Anybody want to substitute motion on the adjournment? Any discussion? <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right. Motion.